Hey y'all, my name is Lizzie Webb and I am a senior here at APU. So now before we get started, uh, I would just like to begin in a word of prayer. Hey God, thank you so much uh, just for giving me this opportunity to speak, to study your work, to learn from you, and to continue to teach other people what you're teaching me. And I pray that you speak through me, that it's not my words, but it's yours, and that you calm my nerves as I step up and speak your word to these people. So you're gonna be Amen. 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 All right. So, how many of you have ever tried to lift something that is way too heavy for you to lift, like physically? Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So maybe for you it was some sort of, like something in the weight room. I know I did this when I was still on acro and we lifted weights and I got really, really, really proud of myself because I was, I was adding weights and I was like, you know what, I'm going to add tens on the sides. And I was like, didn't really think adding tens on the sides meant really adding 20 pounds because you're adding 10 on each side. And so I bent down, we're doing deadlifts and I bent down and I'm like, no, can't do it. I can't do it. I can't even get it off the ground. And so, oh. Not good, not a good time. But maybe if that's not you, maybe you've been in a situation where you've babysat before. And you're babysitting, and it's at night, and you're on the couch, and the kid falls asleep, and you're like, oh wait, I gotta bring him to the bed. And so you go up, and it's just dead weight that you are trying to lift because they are just out, they are asleep, they're not moving, they're not waking up, they're not helping you at all, and so you're over here like, how am I going to get this kid into bed? So you're like dragging them across the floor. Oh hopefully not, hopefully not. You lift them up, but it's heavy because when they're asleep, oh, the dead weight, it's just crazy. But enough about physically lifting things. What about emotionally? Have you ever held on to something so emotionally heavy that it almost felt like a physical weight weighing? That's right, we're getting deep right away. <laughs> Think about it, in this last year, there has been an emotional burden after emotional burden after emotional burden placed on us and thrown our way because of the brokenness of the world. And I know that COVID, bringing up COVID again, bringing up the pandemic, it's not something that we wanna talk about anymore but the reality is that those things have made us who we are today. And so no matter who you are, the pandemic has left us with emotional burdens that we weren't told to prepare for, that we weren't told how to deal with. And so maybe you find yourself today holding the weight of the loss of experiences that you were promised the loss of loved ones due to a disease that spread from the body. The racial injustice that we saw break out across our nation. Or maybe it was you being forced to be home into a situation that you were actually happy college took you out of. And now you're back in that emotional burden of a place. And so I want you to keep these feelings in the back of your mind as I have your attention today. And memories may come up as I continue to talk and I encourage you to hold on to those, remember those. Because those thoughts and those memories and those experiences, like I said before, have shaped us to be the people that we are today. They have shaped us to react the way that we do today. They've shaped our emotions, our mental health, the state of our spirituality, Today, October 28th, 2021, we are the people we are because of the emotional burdens that have been placed on us in the pandemic. So I want to ask you, where are you at today? Emotionally, spiritually, mentally? And I want you to sit for a moment and sit with your eyes closed, if you're comfortable, and just truthfully reflect on how you feel in alignment with your whole being today. And just think about it. 
And with your eyes still closed, go ahead and listen to these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take a deep breath in and out. That passage may sound really familiar to us. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it's a passage that is filled with so much. It's filled with literary parallels, with motivations. But most importantly, it's a pas passage that's filled with promises. And not just any promise, but promises of rest. This passage holds so much meaning, but it holds even more meaning when we take a look right before it at verse 27 of what was said just before, and also Matthew chapter 11, and Matthew as a whole. So just before this passage, Jesus makes a statement that was very profound. And he says in verse 27, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those whom the Son chooses to reveal to him. And this verse in and of itself has so much in it that could be a whole other sermon for a whole other time. But what this statement is saying here, in its simplicity, is the confirmation of the relationship between God and Jesus. A relationship that was revealed little by little through Jesus' birth in Mary, through Jesus' baptism, the temptation from Satan, Jesus' miracles that he performed, and his authority to forgive sins. And so as I was researching in commentaries, it was mentioned that the whole narrative of Matthew is, sets up this point that was made and sets it up with truth and validity for this statement. That ultimately no one knows God until they see the truth of who Jesus is. And so in verse 27, he says this, and Jesus makes this grand statement. And then in verse 28, he says, come to me. And so if we only know, if we, if we want to know the truth of who God is, and the only way to do that is through knowing and seeing Jesus, then this invitation right here is the most important thing that Jesus could have said next. He's saying, if you want to know me, and if you want to know my Father, then what you have to do is come to me. That's easy enough, right? Just come to Jesus. It's that easy. But it's not. Because of what he says next. Who is he calling to come to? He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. These are the people that he's calling. And if it's real rest that we are seeking, and we're not finding it in other things, because we are weary and we are burdened, mm -hmm. Jesus says it clear right here. Come to me all who are weary and burdened, with all of your weary, with all of your weariness, with all of your burdens, first what you need to do is come to me. Come to me and fall at my feet. It's like when the emotions have piled up too much and that one person you trust finally comes and embraces you in a hug and all you do is just crumble. The tears fall. You feel like you can't hold yourself up anymore. This is what Jesus is inviting us to first. He's saying, come to me in all your tears, in all your emotion, in all your heaviness, and what? He says, I will give you rest. I will give you real rest. And so, are you who Jesus is talking to today. Are you weary and burdened? I know I am. 
I know that this season has been one of the hardest seasons for me. You know, going through the pandemic at home was truly an emotional roller coaster for me. And then moving back on campus, I thought that was gonna be the fix to all my problems. I thought that was gonna be the fix to my emotions. I thought that coming back meant to be, that I got to be back with my old friends, making the most of every moment of senior year because this is the last year that we have here. But I forgot one little detail. Over the pandemic, I kind of took myself out of the group of friends that I had. Not only that, I also quit the team that I was a part of. So I was a part of Acro, but I left. And so when I came back, the first two weeks of school, I was in emotional shock because life back at school wasn't what it seemed to be. It wasn't what I expected it to be. And so as my emotions grew, my workload grew, my commitments grew, and I didn't know how to deal with it at all. So I was sitting on, a, on my balcony just a few weeks ago with the Bible open to this passage, trying to figure out why God put it on my heart and why I was speaking on this. And then my thoughts started getting sidetracked. I started going down a rabbit hole of the past few months at school. My thoughts got more and more negative. I was starting to think of the first week at school when I had my first anxiety attack in a public place. I'm thinking of what caused it and how isolated I felt. I started to let my thoughts go to places that told me I didn't matter and that no one's gonna understand me. And then in a moment I snapped back into reality. And I looked back at this passage that I was open to and God really spoke to me. He said, Lizzie, come to me. And it's like all my thoughts just went he said, just come to me. Who cares if you're a mess? Just come to me. And I kept reading because I was like, why? Why do I need to come to you? And he says, because I will give you rest. And rest in the original Greek is related to the sense of peace and security. But more broadly, it's a sense of human well-being. So Jesus is here promising a rest that I can pretty confidently say each and every one of us are looking for at this moment in the semester. A rest that offers peace in the middle of chaos. A rest that offers security in a time where everything seems to be falling through the cracks. A rest that moves us toward a sense of well-being that sometimes we don't even think can be possible. And now if this is the promise that Jesus is giving, how come we don't feel it? We go to a Christian university. Here in this classroom, we're part of the practical theology department. We want to go into ministry. Why are we not feeling the rest that Jesus is promising? And if I were to take a guess, it's because we're not coming to Jesus first. We're going to our friends. We're going to our family. We're going to social media. And I'm not saying that those things are bad. I'm not saying you should never go there. But where are you going first? So I want to ask you, have you sat with Jesus recently? Have you told him what's going on? Have you come to him with all of your weirdness? with all of your burdens. Because what does he say first? He says, come to me. That's what we need to do. In all of your weariness, in all of your brokenness, in all of your emotion, in all of the tiredness, come and fall at my feet. And that is when we will receive rest and real rest. But the promise doesn't end there. Jesus keeps going, and he says in verse 29, Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And so the reality here is that we can't sit in brokenness forever. We come to Jesus, and we sit for a moment in our brokenness, but we can't stay there. And honestly, our life doesn't allow us to stay there forever, because we have the next class, the next assignment, the next task that we have to get done. And so how do we keep going? Well, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then he continues to speak, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And an easy yoke, a light burden, this is an oxymoron. You don't see these two words go together ever. They shouldn't. And how could they? Yet, Jesus said it. So what does he mean by easy and light? How can a yoke be easy? How can a burden be light? Well, this is because Jesus already took on the hard burden. Jesus sacrificed his life for us, for our sins, so that we can come to him, so that we can learn from him. And so what does this mean for us? How do we tie it all together? Well, first, we need to come to Jesus. I've said that so many times today. We need to come to Jesus first. We need to stop looking for other outlets for our problems. And we need to come to Jesus first. He knows we're weary. He knows the burden of the pandemic, of senior year, of our future, and he knows that it's heavy. But when we come to him, he gives us rest. Even if it's just for a moment, he gives us a glimpse of rest. And so once we're able to stand again, we are to continue to learn from him. To walk through life side by side with Jesus. Taking on his yoke, which is his teachings, his way of life. Because that weight is going to be manageable. Easy and light doesn't mean that the burden isn't there. It means that we can hold it. It means that we won't be crushed by the weight because Jesus is holding the weight with us. So I want to leave us with a question as we close. Do you need to come to Jesus today? Do you need to let your weariness and your burden go in his presence? Just take a moment. Is that you? Think about it for a second. So I encourage you today, and truly, I encourage you guys today, give yourself the space today to find a safe place to come before Jesus. In all your mess, in all your pain, in all your tiredness, come to Jesus and receive the only rest that he can offer. And so I'm going to close with a reading of this same passage, but from the message translation. And it reads almost like a benediction. And so let these words just wash over you as we close. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. 
walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Amen. Amen.